Indiana Dimes problem. Take me away, officer, I swear. He felt that the driver of the Ford might not have been able to see Dean, as the silver of his sports car had blended in with the gray of the highway. The inquest ruled that this, coupled with Dean's speeding, had caused the accident. I was uh, satisfied with the results of the inquest. I had no reason to, to question uh, any of the, the jurors. And uh, it's our system, and I, I felt they did a good job. But there were unanswered questions that remain to this day. If Dean was speeding, how fast was he going? Was his car really that hard to see? Was the accident his fault? What happened asked failure analysis to go back in time and re-examine the death of a legend. Investigators Gary Cost and Eric Phillips took on the case. I was in high school when uh, James Dean got killed in this accident. Since he was such a public figure at that time, I found it a very interesting uh, task to take on. There are both advantages and disadvantages to looking at an accident now that happened uh, almost 40 years ago. Disadvantages are the materials are harder to get, uh, the site may have changed. The advantages are that we can apply techniques uh, for visualizing the accident that weren't even conceivable back in 1955. In September of 1992, Eric Phillips went to the intersection near Paso Robles in order to recapture the scene. As it was the same time of year as the accident, the light and angle of the sun would help ensure the reconstruction's accuracy. Eric brought sophisticated measuring devices to test the lighting. He wanted to find out whether or not Dean's silver car would have been visible. Back in the office, the accident scene was systematically reconstructed by using Eric's data and aerial photographs taken at the time of the accident. One of our goals in this uh, recreation was to go back in time to the time when the accident occurred and try to visualize what the accident may have looked like to people at the scene. To do this, the men took photographs of the site as it appears today and overlaid details from an old photograph. Using this overlay, they recreated the exact features of the highway as it existed almost 40 years earlier. Piece by piece, the real events of September 30th, 1955, began to take shape. It was uh, eerie for me to investigate this uh, accident that happened two years before I was born. The fame of the person involved in, in this collision was part of that. And in addition, the facts of the incident being quite different than I was led to believe up until I looked at all the materials. Once all of the data had been collected, the accident scene was recreated inside the computer. For the first time, it was possible to see both drivers' points of view. This is what James Dean may have seen as he entered the intersection. This is what the driver of the Ford might have seen. The investigation concluded that the silver-gray Porsche should have been visible to the other driver. There were no visual obstruction, and there was sufficient contrast and light available to have seen the Porsche for more than a half a mile away. Through their computer simulations, the men were also able to collide the vehicles over and over again until they wound up where they were in the real accident. Their actual speeds were then determined. The results of the analysis showed that the uh, speed of the Ford was about 55 miles an hour, and the speed of the Porsche was about 55 to 60 miles per hour, just prior to the collision. Had Dean been speeding, his vehicle would have traveled much further before it came to a rest. Instead, his final resting place was here. Which indicates to us that uh, the speed was much closer to the 55 miles an hour that our computer runs uh, corroborate. For all I know, he may have been reckless elsewhere in his life, but at this particular accident, our investigations indicate that he was not behaving recklessly. The results of these tests have rewritten a myth and partially explained a tragedy. I think it is understandable why the high-speed version of James Dean's accident was so widely accepted. It was consistent with his image as a young rebel, his persona. And certainly, we don't mean to take away from that image, but in point of fact, the evidence shows the accident happened at a lower speed, not atypical of the way you or I drive. Though James Dean may have lived in the fast lane, his death was just an accident, a needless tragedy that strangely has given him a sort of immortality. What happened, we'll be right back.
At the time of his death, Dean had just finished filming Giant, a movie that traced a man's journey from youth to old age. It's ironic and sad that James Dean never had the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of that final character he had brought to such wondrous life. I'm Ken Howard. Good night.